So you talked about uh, you, you got tennis elbow. And, uh, yeah. I think on your forehand, you've got quite a lot of wrist coming into the shot. And as you can imagine, if you mistime that that shot, and this is extended through here, you've got quite a lot of tension on that forearm, and that vibration of miss hitting it at that point is going to send vibrations down here and then affect you in the sense that you're going to be getting tennis elbow. So we need to lose the wrist action. This is how you're generating a lot of your powers through the wrist at the moment. And the way we can stop using the wrist a little bit more is, is actually through our footwork. At the moment you hit your forehand in the open stance more often than not, which means you have to muscle through the shot and use your wrist a little bit. Whereas if you were to get sideways in the close stance, you wouldn't have to use your wrist as much because you can actually rotate a little bit more into the shot. Okay. You're a right eye dominant player. Okay. Which explains why you hit so many of your shots on the forehand in the open stance. Because if you were to step sideways, you might not be able to see the ball with your right eye. But on your backhand, yeah. you've got this incredible backhand because you can step across here, but you've still got your right eye on the ball. Yeah. So you've got more access to rotation on the or turning away from the ball on your backhand than you do on your forehand where you've got to uh, stay a little bit more open to the court. But the issue is that with your open stance footwork on that forehand, you're muscling it and you're using your wrist too much. So what I want you to try and do is a little bit of extra footwork on the forehand side where you have to step out and then, then you can get closed. If you line your toes up to the target, as long as you keep your head forward, you can still see the ball. If you were not to take that footwork out and you just cut the corner here with this foot, then you'd be in trouble. Okay, so from your ready position, you're going to side step out and see if you can get close stance a little bit more often. So you did well to correct yourself on some of those and instead of cutting across on those wider ones, you did a shuffle and stayed open. You hit them. It's interesting when you did come across like this, these are the ones where you mistimed the ball. Maybe you just couldn't, you can't see it quite as well. And we're all the same. I'm, I'm the other way. I'm left eye dominant. So I can, I can come across like this on this side. But I struggle with the backhand. I can't come across the backhand. I have to get my footwork out and get my feet lined up. So first off your grip is a little bit spread out on the backhand, the one-handed backhand here. Yeah. And this could cause some injury to the wrist. Ideally, you're going to have a block grip, much stronger grip for the one-handed backhand. And then you're not going to be susceptible to, to, to wrist injury if you mistime it through on that backhand. Okay, so try maintain more of a right angle between your racket and your forearm. Uh, second point I want to make is that to generate the power, you're hitting the ball quite flat through the backhand. Whereas instead of going flat, which is going to give you less consistency, as a lot of them are hitting the top of the net, I want you to try and hit the ball higher. Okay, which means you're going to start lower with your racket and push the ball up. It's going to do a few things. First thing is you're not going to be hitting the net as much. You'll be getting more depth on your shots. But also these higher shots, if they're going to the backhand cross court, they're difficult shots. Whereas a low backhand is generally an easier shot to get to. Okay, so just start with your racket a bit lower. Try and get more of a block grip. Push it up. Yeah, so they were much higher over the net a lot less balls going into the net. Now, you're not making best use of your right eye dominancy on this side. A lot of the time your shoulders are still a little bit open to the shot, whereas you can get a real turn into this shot. All you have to do is keep that right on the ball, and the more you can turn away from the ball, the more you'll be able to rotate into the shot. I string it very low, but it's the string that allows me to string it that low. This is called a, a string, yeah. this is a soft polyester string. So hopefully, hopefully you felt by turning away from that shot you got access to more effortless power. In an ideal world, you have both eyes on the ball. 
but I think it's more advantageous to get that shoulder turn away. You're going to get access to more power and more spin from having more shoulder rotation into the shot. And then with the follow through on the, on the backhand, you've been talking about getting rotation after the shot. Whereas actually with the one hander, we want to try and restrict the rotation after the shot. So our rotation goes into the shot before the shot. And then instead of coming all the way around with the rotation, we're going to counterbalance it with the left arm. So we throw the left arm back, stick our chest out, and that's going to stop the rotation. Because if we rotate after the shot, that means the ball might spray anyway left and right. But if we counter the rotation there, we'll get that pinpoint accuracy that we're after. So rotate before the shot and then stop the rotation.